Hi, and welcome to MBA 590 Digital Marketing. Today we're going to be talking about mobile marketing. Uh, so we've talked a lot about mobile in the rest of this class when we talk about responsive design and everything like that. But I want to give you a couple of highlights that we may have not mentioned before. So, you know, mobile is very important, right? Uh, mobile phones, especially smartphones, are powerful tools, right? They are very personal. There's been a number of surveys that have shown that people, you know, would would rather not give up their mobile phones to even their best friends, right? They're always carried, they're always on, they can make payments, right? You can actually purchase things on your phone, which means you can actually make a sale right there. They're available at the point of creative inspiration, so if someone gets an idea and they're thinking about it, they can go online and they can look it up and they can buy it right away, right? Um, they're trackable, you know, you can get access to GPS coordinates, you can get access to um, uh, information about the, the user's photos, et cetera, everything like that, right through the mobile device. And they're able to really capture the social context of media consumption, who people are interacting with, what they're doing with those people, and where they are. More than 75% of the world's population uses mobile phones. In fact, the Mobile Marketing Association of Asia stated that there are 6 billion people on the planet, 4.8 billion people have a mobile phone, while only 4.2 billion have a toothbrush, right? So there are more uh, mobile phones than there are um, uh, toothbrushes on the planet, right? And you can see that, the that there's a large number of in the percentage of the population that actually own mobile phones, even in uh, currently uh, developing countries, right? So everything from Malaysia, where it's almost at 100% of use, right, to, um, uh, you know, down as low, and in some of the lowest places, it's still at levels of like around 40 to 50%, right? Um, and this is, uh, own a mobile cellular to telephone before using one, right? And if you look at just people using one, it's even higher, right, in some respects, right? And so there's just a lot of mobile phones out there, even in uh, countries that we don't necessarily think of as being that wealthy at times, right? People in the U.S. spend an inordinate amount of time on their phones, right? So in 2017, it is estimated that we will spend on average three hours a day on the mobile internet for the U.S. adult, right? Um, two and a half hours of that will be spent in app and about half an hour on the mobile web, right? So this is an incredible space for marketers to be located. There's nothing else, really, single activity that consumes three hours of our, our lives per day nowadays. Moreover, there's an increasing number of people within the U.S. that are becoming smartphone dependent, right? That rely almost exclusively on their smartphones for broadband access, right? They either have no broadband service at home other than their smartphone data plan, uh, and basically they have limited options for online access other than the cell phone. As a result, the 7% of the U.S. population is relies heavily on its smartphone for all of its internet access, right? Uh, and so there's a large proportion of, of the U.S. that is really using smartphones as their main internet source. Uh, more than half of the smartphone owners out there have used their phone to do things that are very, very personal. Get info about health conditions, do online banking, look up real estates, look up info on jobs, right? And so these are places that are becoming increasingly important to uh, the individual consumer, right? Platforms are, are varying, of course, always, but Android actually still, despite iOS's appeal, has the dominant share uh, in terms of worldwide market share, partially because uh, the Android platform is just cheaper in many places, right? Um, and as you can see here, it's, it's, it's increasingly prevalent. And there's actually been some discussions about the fact that things like the S7 uh, and the, sorry, the S8 and these different other plat new Android phones out there are actually better in some ways than the newer revelations of the iPhone, right? So that's becoming an increasingly important aspect. Mobile ad spend is going off through the roof as well, right? So uh, right now, the expectation is the, the, the growth has been huge, right, in terms of mobile ad spend, um, as high as, um, you know, 78, 9% increase in mobile ad spend. It's dropping now, I mean, but that was partially because it was very low to begin with. We're now expecting that the, the global ad spend, that the mobile ad spend market will reach around $65 billion in 2019, right? Um, and by format, the vast majority of that money is still being spent on display advertising, right? So banners, rich media, uh, with, uh, with a high chunk on search media, and then some on SMS and other things along those lines. 
However, there has been some complaint that mobile ads don't work. So Neil Gupta in the 2013 HBR talked about the fact that people like them less than any other form of advertising. 80% say that mobile ads are unacceptable. And why is that, right? Well, partially it's because there's no right side, which means that an ad necessarily reduces the content display. So here's a, a Spotify ad, for instance, right? And you can see um, right away that there is a, that reduces the amount of other display that you get. There's also the problem which is called the fat finger effect. People tend to accidentally click on these ads as a result, right? Advertisers are spending money for uninterested leads, right? Uh, and so that's kind of a negative aspect as well. Now, for users, firms are starting to adapt to this by doing things like using native advertising, right? Stylizing in the same way the rest of the content would within that app, right? So rather than having this standout banner, you actually have, say, a sponsored story or something like that that looks just like another part of the, of the ad, and that reduces the amount of real estate that's taking up and potentially also provides additional content to the user that's interested in looking at it. So why are people using mobile? Uh, when designing a good mobile campaign, you should think about that. You should think about what your users are using and how you're gonna attract them, right? Are they simply bored and browsing and so you wanna use some sort of banner ads to attract their attention? Are they task-driven and looking for particular information, in which case maybe search mobile is the way to go? Or are they performing a repeated action like checking the weather, uh, looking at their commute, in which case maybe a branded app best satisfies the needs of what they're doing, right? So you really need to assess why they're going to be using mobile in order to assess what the best platform you could provide them with to look at it is. There are a lot of ways to interact, and two of these ways we've spent a lot of time talking about before, the mobile web and branded apps. So I'm not gonna rehash those at all. You can go and look at the user experience uh, videos and the videos on uh, writing for the web and designing the web for the web that really help you out in that space. However, there are some other ones we haven't talked about, like SMS, MMS, uh, QR codes, location-based services, and we've mentioned augmented reality in general as to how it's going to change, but we haven't talked about how it affects mobile marketing, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So SMS is obviously um, text messaging, right? Uh, and you can use SMS to market, right? You can basically get people to subscribe to services, and this is a very powerful tool because it is one of the most basic push notifications that you can create. It doesn't require people to install an app. They just get this little text message that says, hey, we got a coupon or whatever uh, for you to use right now. And a lot of times this is done with using what are called CSCs or common short codes. These are the, the uh, um, codes that you can text to that aren't full digits that people can kind of remember, right? So for instance, um, I believe that the American Red Cross does 90999, right? You can text donate to that code and then you can donate $10 to the American Red Cross, right? Uh, and you can also use this to enter competitions. Uh, they can receive marketing. They can make payments like the donation example. And SMS can also help with CRM by maintaining engagement with the users, right? So if I have an SMS and build permission from a user, right, then I can keep, make sure to stay engaged with them on a regular basis. I can provide them with prompts about uh, going back to stores, making purchases, telling them things are waiting in their inbat and their shopping carts, right, that they might want to purchase. And MMS, Multimedia Message Servicing, even gives you the ability to send graphics, stickers, audio, and video. QR codes. QR codes are a great way to kind of interface between the mobile and the physical environment. So you often place mobile QR codes in different physical locations, like in a store, or you know, if you're a tourist agency, maybe on, on big sites or on signs or even on advertise, other advertisements. People can then scan them. Um, and what's interesting is you can actually use this QR code generator to generate your own QR codes. Uh, and they can generate either text, URLs, phone numbers, or even SMSs, right? So this one actually is a valid one I, I put together. You can uh, check it out and see if you can read it on uh, your smart device. I'll leave it up here a little bit to see if people can read it. Uh, but essentially, uh, this is an example of creating some text with a, a QR code, for instance. And uh, especially in cases where you want to tie the physical experience to the virtual experience, the QR code is a great way to go about it, right? So if you want people to install an, a branded app, for instance, you can have the QR code for that app laid out very easily. 
Location-based services, and we talked a little about this when we talked about social networks, but they are a way for you to encourage people to create free word of mouth about your company. And especially worse when there are physical locations tied to the company, right? Uh, so for instance, Swarm is a great one that allows you to check in in different places, then all the friends see where those check-ins are going, right? Um, and you can create reviews through user-generated content which can drive traffic directly to your website, right? Directly from the Swarm or Yelp or whatever it happens to be. You can also create promotions based upon check-ins and based upon location-based services. So Swarm can allow you to actually check in and then um, uh, get coupons or steals, which is another local one that does pretty well, allows you to check in and then you can get, you can encourage coupons and encourage spending for uh, the consumers, right? Um, even Facebook, right, does this check-in. And one of the things I love about Facebook, right, or one of the aspects that I think is a great way to do this now is that they have this ability to tie Wi-Fi to your check-ins, right? So when you go to a restaurant, like I was at the Rally Times Bar, in order to get on the free Wi-Fi, you have to check in, right? Immediately causing that check-in to appear on my Facebook feed, meaning that anyone else who is friends with me automatically sees where I am and sees that it's a place that they might want to think about. Finally, let's talk about augmented reality. And we already talked about this a lot before, but this is the ability to combine computer graphics into the real world. And it allows us to augment sensory information with additional content, right? Um, it has three main characteristics. It's always combining the real and the virtual. If it doesn't combine the real, then it's virtual reality and not augmented reality. It's real-time interactive, right? You, you, don't, you are interacting uh, constantly right there. And it's a 3D in terms of the way it interacts with the objects around it. This is the potential for a huge pot market, right? Really made possible by the ever more powerful smartphones, right? Before we had powerful smartphones, we couldn't really interact in this case. And two of the examples that we've talked about before, but I think are great examples, are the Yelp monocle, which allows you to just scan around and see uh, the reviews of restaurants near you, and uh, Pokemon Go, of course, right, which encouraged people to walk around and explore places. Uh, and you know, they didn't do a lot of this, but you could, uh, but you could have promotional Pokemon uh, examples where, like, if you go here, you get certain badges and things like that. And in fact. Uh, Yelp actually teamed up and you could actually search for restaurants that had poke stops, for instance, right, in order to encourage people to go there. Um, so I think this is an example of where mobile will really be transforming in the near future, and it'll be exciting to see how companies can really use mobile and mobile marketing campaigns to really take off to the next level.